questions one might like to ask uh, in various levels of inquiry, the one of them being the integration of various levels of inquiry, the other the question of the integration of cognitive systems. The first question we expect just our scientific faith and unity of nature or something, we expect that there's going to be an answer to the first question, uh, whether we can find it or not, uh, but there's no particular reason to expect an answer to the second. There may be or there may not be. If there isn't, there's no unified cognitive science. For the moment, there's real progress in a few areas, including vision at the computational representational level, and in this case also at the cellular level. Uh, there's progress in language, but almost solely at the computational solely at the computational representational level and some performance things like acquisition. There's studies of conceptual development, closely related to language, which are quite interesting. There's studies of probabilistic reasoning and error and various other topics. There are all sorts of areas where there's interesting results concerning Conceptual development, closely related to language, which are quite interesting. There's studies of probabilistic studies of conceptual development, closely related to language, things like acquisition. There's studies of conceptual development, closely related to language, which are quite interesting. There's studies of probabilistic reasoning and error and various other topics. There are all sorts of areas where there's interesting results. results concerning human cognitive function. As far as I'm aware, all within the framework of highly modular assumptions, which as I said, seem to be natural. But we're very far from any understanding of the articulation, the architecture, uh, the general structure of the mind-brain, apart from a very few specific modules which appear to have their own special design. That leaves most of the questions one might like to ask uh, enshrouded in mystery. And it's entirely possible that this is mystery of a kind that a human intelligence, which after all has its own possible that this is mystery of a kind that a human intelligence, and it's entirely possible that this is mystery of a kind that a human intelligence human intelligence, which after all has its own specific biological properties, uh, is unable to penetrate uh, even in principle. One thing that struck me was that the statement the child acquires language rapidly is rapidly is interest relative in exactly the same fashion that the statement Boston is near to New York. How do you answer some mind-brain functionalist who comes to you and says the child acquires language excruciatingly slow, slowly. We have this huge neural net that this huge neural net, there are billions of synapse firings and billions of weight changes. I'm, if, if it is genuinely interest relative and the child yeah. acquires language rapidly is only a true statement within some shared interest, how do you establish between yourself and right. this mind-brain person a shared interest that establishes that your statement is true? That's a very good point. Uh, in fact, when I Uh, in fact, when I say that language is acquired very rapidly, that's, on, that's you're, you're absolutely right. That's like John is almost home. What's rapidly?
what's rapidly. That's only meant to stimulate your imagination. It's not meant as a proposal. The way to answer the question is to construct an explicit proposal as to how the language is acquired. Now, there are specific proposals. specific proposals based on innate structure. Kind of what I was saying before, if somebody can propose a general learning mechanism, explicit proposal as to how the language is acquired. Now, there are specific proposals based on innate structure. Kind of what I was saying before, if somebody can propose a general learning mechanism or some kind of a network or something that does anything, then we'll have something to talk about. So far, the only thing we have is highly specific structures. The idea that we seem to be directing our to be directing our energy studying things that people don't do very well. That seems to uh, point to something on even a, a mundane level for me. I get the feeling that a lot of the what might be called infrastructural problems of society today are, when it comes down to it, moral problems. What we treat as economics problems and these sorts of things. And I believe that that will have to do with people concentrating on things that humans do well. And when I think about it, I think that a lot of the things that people do well are very simple, subtle things that people also take for granted. And that most of the people in this world the people in this world seem to be running around trying to impress each other by doing things better that people don't do very well. I just wonder what, uh, what you thought about this kind of thinking. Well, I'm not sure I understand. I'm not sure I understand the implications of what you're saying. I agree with particular statements. We ought to be studying the things that people do well if we want to understand people. Uh, I also agree that the problems of society are in as well if we want to understand what you're saying. I agree with particular statements. We ought to be studying the things that people do well if we want to understand people. Uh, I also agree that the problems of society are in substantial part moral problems, but only in the sense that when we plan our actions, uh, we try to change things or whatever, we're, we're doing it in terms of, a, an, a, of some kind of moral values. We ought to be as clear about that as we can, some conception of what's right for people and so on. And it's good to be clear about that. But beyond that, I don't know where to go. I think these subjects are too intellectually thin for deep analysis to carry us very far. You work pretty much by instinct and intuition.